Hello everyone, welcome to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin by trying to refuel that stranded Ares Pod G in orbit around the Earth. So we've got our main missions underway and of course the Kerbals are on their way to Mars but we do have some backup missions including that stranded Ares Pod G that we would like to move on to Mars as well. Also for Mars is the UDMH depot on the Fiji 3R1 and Mars Port 1, that's the backup Mars Port 1, on the Fiji 551, which is equivalent to the Saturn V. After that, we continue with launches because we have a Jupiter launch window in five days, and that is a properly plotted uh, transfer window planner window, and because it's different from the curve alarm clock windows, of course. And uh, for that, we want to send over Jove Port 1 and Jovian Demon, but I forget whether we need to refuel the Nerva first, because I built Jove Port 1 and Jovian Demon a long time ago. I don't remember if they needed Nerva to push them along their way. Maybe. So perhaps the first thing we do is try and refuel Nerva again, and then launch those two, just in case. So that's the sequence of events that I have planned. And here is the refueler for Ares Pod G, but we need to match inclinations. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, Mars Port 1 backup start rolling out now. I don't think it's going to take uh, more than two days to fix up the launch pad. So yeah, let's get that starting on the rollout. And we have to time warp. So it's got to be rolling out while we're trying to launch here. But it takes so long to roll out that it's not going to make a difference. I'm going to control this manually because this is a Nico rocket and not a Fiji rocket. Fiji rockets I'll use KOS on, but Nico rockets I never cooked up the launch script for. And I'm still worried about engines going out randomly, you know, test flight. Okay, that's good enough on the relative inclination and it'll help with the rendezvous anyway. We don't want to have to do this again. So, on that note... Ignition. And launch. There's a Nico rocket because of course Nico rockets are quicker to build than the Fiji rockets. Alright, we're past max Q. Everything is looking fine so far. Eight NK-33 engines. At least they're more reliable than the NK-15s. Okay. And staging. Staging. Okay, we have a good ignition of two NK-43s. Ah, there we go. Finally seeing the proper delta V there, and we basically got 800 meters per second to rendezvous. The rendezvous fuel is not the hydrogen and oxygen. It is the Arizine and N204. And that's because it was cheaper that way. If we had put like an RL-10 on there, obviously that wouldn't be all that great. Okay, we're pretty much spot on on inclination. Of course, since I'm in control, that's not exactly magical. Um, otherwise, everything looks good for for a low orbit. Um, let me just double check the orbit of the target. And it seems to be around. Well, it's it's pretty low too. We're gonna have to get pretty low to be under it. I don't think we need to be under it, actually, taking a look at it. Maybe we should just be higher. Okay. And... Well, we're in a higher orbit now, that's for sure. Shut down. Okay. Well, good enough. So, we have three Astros engines on here. And let's target it again. Inclination is a mere 0 0.06 degree difference. And, yep, we're coasting up. 
Okay, approach has been uneventful and we're uh, we're about to dock now. So, yeah. Uh, though I'm worried about the target using its RCS thrusters right now. I don't know why it is. It shouldn't be. But it very visibly is. Um, great. Yeah. Um, hold on a sec. Why are you using your RCS thrusters? Uh, you know, I said SAS. I don't know why you're... Well, let's have kill rotation. I mean, yeah, SAS should just keep it stable, and there's no reason for it to be firing its RCS thrusters at all. No idea. Anyway, we have had boil off of the hydrogen. Uh, I didn't put. Oops. I didn't put uh, radiators because that would have taken longer to build. Okay, we are connected. Unfortunately, the resource tab does not seem to be reading things properly, so there's some glitchiness going on. That's all aerozine down there. And we still have quite a lot of it. Okay. And, well, I guess we could top off its aerozine and into a 4. Not that uh, it's actually, you know, it is actually using aerozine and into a 4 up here as well. Let me just double check whether any in the lander portion has been used up. No, it, it seems to be all right. I mean, nearly topped off. So we probably don't need to do any refueling of this side. It'll just burden it and reduce its delta V if I try and refuel the Aerozine N204. So we're going to deorbit the refueler now. But only after double checking that this is all good. 4,339 can definitely transfer us to Mars. So, yep. Okay, that will be destroyed, and this can plot for Mars now. Incidentally, our uh, rendezvous didn't take that long. We're still rolling out the Mars Port 1 launch, so one day and four hours on that. Okay, we have our plot for Mars. I have to point out that this is still probably almost certainly doomed, because this was the one without ablator. So, and I reconsidered that for the next Ares Pod G but not this one. So, not too sure how this is going to do on the whole capture into Mars atmosphere. It's possible, as we saw in the test, that the heat shield actually explodes, but the rest of the craft is okay because, you know, without any blazer, they're made out of paper or something. Anyway, here we go, ignition. It's a good J2 ignition, and we're on our way. The resource is still not reading right. I hope that's not a huge glitch. I'm, I definitely should restart before continuing on with the next mission. And again, the next thing will be Mars Port 1. Okay, the burn should have been pretty good. And we are getting ready for shutdown. Shutdown, 2.1 off there. Let's see what we've got. Do we have a Mars encounter? Uh, I don't even see our outward bound orbit, and I think that's uh, due to the same glitch that makes our resource panel not show all the resources. So, yeah, uh, let me go to the tracking station and pop back here. Okay, I'm back from the tracking station, and weirdly, it sounded like the engine was running when it wasn't supposed to be, but it's obviously not running. And also, weirdly, we have the maneuver node still. But we're obviously going at beyond escape trajectory, and do we now have an encounter with the with Mars? And yes, yes we do. And how good is it? Uh, well, not great, but could be worse. Uh, it's obviously something that I should plot to fix, but I don't know. Okay, well, I missed recording it, but I accidentally pressed G instead of H, you know, for the RCS. And that extended the landing gear legs, and they got overstressed and exploded. Um, at this point, that's fine. I'm anticipating just using the fuel in the pod to complete, uh, to make orbit around Mars instead of trying to aero capture with the uh, heat shield. 
maybe, and then using this actually as uh, something a little bit different. Maybe as another go-around pod similar to the Light Landers. Okay, the correction burn is completed, and this burn is actually at Mars SOI. So let's just do the staging. Alright, well, I don't know if the heat shield's gonna be useful or not, or whether we're gonna dump it once we get over there. Uh, possibly we're just gonna dump it once we get over there. We're probably a little bit off right now. Well, yeah, but anyway, we'll just correct that over there. This thing does have a whopping 4,900 meters per second to work with. That's enough, of course, to use some on landing and still take off again and make Mars orbit. And it does have two parachutes, well not two parachutes, it's got four parachutes, two drogues and two mains to ensure that it lands safely. But of course, uh, Engineer would have to repack those each time. Once it gets back to orbit and we want to reuse it for another landing, for instance, if we, if we refuel, refuel it then, and we can refuel it, it can be reusable, but right now it's not even usable with no landing legs, so sort of an academic thing. Okay, hopefully the other one will be in full service though, the Ares Pod G we've already sent over. But anyway, we've got this all set up, it should be good, and let me just add the alarm. Okay, here we go with the backup Spaceport 1 on a Fiji 551, and the Saturn core is in the right place for this, so sometimes I do move the Saturn instrument unit down to the second stage, in which case we can't load a script into it, but uh, this time it's fine. So I'm just going to say run PG551 and let's hope for the best. Ignition and launch. Okay, passing through max Q, everything looks good. Saturn V, well, sorry, Fiji 551 uh, proceeding nominally. Okay, and second engine has ignited. A uh, second stage, I should say. Second stage has ignited, and we have five good J2s. Okay, separation of the second stage and the third stage is... I don't know why the third stage always has that pause there, but... Okay, it's good. And we have plenty of fuel. Uh, this mission always had a lot of margin anyway. And we do have a blader on the heat shield, so that's good too. Everything looking fine. We're about to make orbit. Okay, there we go. Alright, program concluded. And now we are free to plot for Mars. Okay, here we are, pointing at the node, everything seems stable, and ignition. So, Trans-Mars injection again. I have to confess that at this point it's getting a little bit tedious, going to Trans-Mars injection over and over and over again. So, uh, one more mission to send over there, and that's to back up UDMH Depot and then we'll finally be done with Mars for a little while. Everything will take some time to get there and in the meantime we'll get to do other things starting with Jupiter. Okay we are on escape it should be a pretty good burn and we are getting ready to shut down. Okay 5.4 Okay, we don't have an encounter with Mars just yet. One of these days, I mean, that's the planned encounter, that's not the real thing. One of these days we'll do the burden and it'll actually work out perfectly. Someday. But it has to be really, really, really precise to manage that. Like, the timing has to be perfect. Okay, there's our necessary correction nearly 80 meters per second, so it wasn't a particularly good initial burn. 
to be honest. And that's that's enough of a burn that we can use J2 again with its last ignition instead of using RCS. Okay, I completed the correction. We've now got a Mars Periapsis there. I created a dummy maneuver here. We will need to get a little bit closer to Mars, but that's all right for now. And we have separated from the J2 stage. So it's just the spacecraft here. I wanted to separate so that we knew how much impulse it was going to give us. So I could correct for that as well. And it's just sort of spinning around for now. Not a care in the world, and we will add an alarm for it. Okay, so there's a Mars port one there. This one will actually arrive first. The other Mars, uh, uh, no, that's Mars base one. Where's the other Mars port? Uh, Mars port one. The other one will actually arrive last. So big difference. Okay, well let's just make sure that the electric charge situation is fine with it. Okay, and yes, it's recharging despite the rotation. All right, so this one's all settled. Let's do the last mission to Mars that we're going to do during this window. Okay, here we are with our final launch to Mars in this window. So run PG 2R1, even though it is a 3R1. I don't have a special 3R1 launch script. Let's see how it goes. It's probably some staging mistake in here, but I'll fix that. We should ignite the center engine before dumping the boosters, so I've got it configured like that. might mean I have to manually drop the boosters, we'll see. Okay, and... Okay, it separated off the boosters on its own. No worries. Though we did deviate from our intended trajectory a little bit. That was certainly better than the last time we launched this, I think. Right, separation of the first stage and ignition of the J2. All right, we're looking good. We should make orbit with 4,000 meters per second, which is what we need. All right, we have made orbit. We do have 4,000 meters per second, so we are ready to transfer to Mars. Let me plot that out. Okay, we're ready to go. And selling fuel down. Oh, I didn't want gear. I keep pressing G accidentally. All right, ignition. It's very frustrating. Fat fingered issues. I don't really have fat fingers, but apparently today is a lack of coordination day for me. Okay, we were a little bit late on the burn, so we we're gonna expect some sort of correction afterwards. Not that we didn't expect one anyway. Okay, we are on escape and switching to SAS. And shut down. 3.2 meters per second off. And we do have an encounter. Good. Always a good start. And of course there needs to be correction. 226,000 kilometers is not particularly close. So let me get on that. Okay, I've done part of the correction, but now I want to separate off the stage so that we can finish the correction just with the payload. And separation. No, well, that's not particularly... Oh, it's following the node. Darn it. That's not what I wanted. Okay, well, that should do the trick. That's a uh, good periapsis for now. And it's basically on the same trajectory as our other missions. And we can add a maneuver there to do a final correction once we get there. Okay, so 
Uh, to recap, uh, you can actually see all our missions going out to Mars. Look at all those nicely arrayed there. Those are the ones that have reached uh, Solar SOI, of course. There's still a few that are inside Earth SOI, lingering. Actually, each one has uh, spent stage with it, probably. So it's a little bit more cluttered. Than you can sort of see the probe as well as the mission together. Gotta delete those spare stages. But anyway, they're all head out there. And given my sloppiness uh, right now, I think that if I try and launch the Jupiter missions, I might accidentally send them to Mars. So, we'll hold off on the Jupiter missions. We've, we managed to get through all those Mars launches right on time for the Jupiter launch. And we'll start with Jove Port 1. That's got to take two days to roll out, so not really on time. Actually, you know what? Cancel that. Maybe we should just launch this Jovian Demon first. It's on a smaller launcher. 13 hours, it'll make that launch window. So we'll, we'll launch that first. Uh, I said I wanted to launch the Nerva Refueler and Refuel Nerva and do all that. I guess we'll do that if it turns out we need to. Because uh, if we can hit the window without doing that, maybe that's for the best. Okay. So, yes, I'll save that for next time. We'll start off with two Jovian launches and then proceed. Probably we'll have to take care of a uh, resupply mission for Spaceport 2. That's our moon, uh, no, that's our, cur uh, come on, Kerbin, Earth port. Now, now I've been doing stock. I've got Kerbin in my mind as well. Okay, and uh, probably Moon Base 1, our one crew there needs another resupply. So that's a thing. I wonder if we can reuse the... No, the supply lander that landed there and connected up with it toppled, didn't it? Otherwise we could have reused that, I think. Anyway, we'll see about all that. And actually this has more food, water, and oxygen than this one, even though this isn't highlighted because it has less capacity. So everything needs to be resupplied. And on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.